Hey everyone, my name is Tony Carcella and uh, we're shooting on location down here in Landrum, South Carolina. Today is June the 8th, I believe. Next week is Father's Day. Um, we're going to make an old-fashioned Trenton tomato pie and I've been going on Facebook and there's a site on there that says it's a Trenton thing. I was born and raised in Trenton, New Jersey in 1958. I do come from a line of pizza makers, restaurant tours, bar owners, uh, builders, etc, 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 political leaders in Trenton. Um, so, I was on this It's a Trenton thing Facebook page and I was so impressed with the information that was on there, especially the pictures and some of the articles about the great city of Trenton things I never knew simply because growing up my mom and dad really never told me and being the fact that my father passed away when I was five years old my mother really didn't like to talk about that much of our lives etc etc um, my father's name was Tony Carcella he was born in 1910 if he was alive today he'd be over a hundred and some years old and um, he had a bar in East Trenton called Carcella's Hideaway on Sherman Avenue. Um, like I said, I, I really didn't know my dad. So that's why I got such a kick out of this. It's a Trenton thing because to me, it's like my family album. And I so much appreciate everybody who puts it together. I don't know their names all together or whatever. And, but I just wanted to say it's a Trenton thing. Thank you so much for being such a blessing to a part of my life that I really uh, never knew much about. But my mom, when my father died, my mom did marry again very soon afterwards to a man named Leroy J. Dulcie, who was called Roy Dulcie, and he worked at the famous Maruca's Tomato Pies on Olden Avenue in Seaside, and so did my mom. She was a waitress, he was a pie maker. And as far as I'm concerned, he was one of the best that came out of Trenton. If not the best, eh, I might be a little biased. My dad, what are you going to do? I call him my father because he raised me. He played baseball with me. He beat my butt sometimes when I needed it. And one thing that I've had against my dad all these years, and I will write that to him in my Father's Day card this week, was the fact that when he married my mother in 1965 or 64 and they got married we had a chance to buy what it what became Gervasio's Italian restaurant on Whitehorse Avenue and because my mother lost everything when my father died when he had no life insurance my mother wanted my father to have a real job so she didn't want to take the risk of having a business like my father had, the hideaway, losing everything. So she made him get a real job. He went with the post office, but he always kept his hand in making tomato pies. He worked for Lola's Pizza on White Horse. He worked for Joey's, which was a Maruca all over. Joey's had different places. My dad worked for John's in Allentown. And he worked for a long time for Caesars on 33 for Louis Silvestro. So I grew up in what you would call a restaurant family and I later at high school worked my first job at Twin Street Steakhouse on Route 33 in Hamilton. Later on I graduated and got my promotion to the Freeway Steakhouse, the Freeway Famous Steakhouse at 330 Perry Street, a Trenton uh, icon. and then became owner of Big Daddy's Hideaway Cafe in Old Bridge, New Jersey. After that, my, I got married in 1995 to a wonderful woman who was still my wife, praise God. And we opened up Via Della Rosa Gourmet Catering and Takeout. And that was in Columbus, New Jersey. Later we moved to Yardville. And we had so much catering business that we could not open to the public. We tried. I, my father came down there. He made pies. We did good. 
but the place was so small it's now the pizza kitchen and I know he's doing well over there God bless him and he makes a tomato pie and I think he worked at Di Lorenzo's in Trenton and so the saga goes on the old tomato pie pizza saga so we had that place from 1997 to 2004 I got hurt had to get out now down here in South Carolina getting ready to go back in do it again do it again Lord hallelujah so I wanted to make this video for many reasons other than just to make a video and being that it's Father's Day we wanted to honor I did I felt led by the Holy Spirit yes I am a preacher man I'm a pastor I love Jesus and this is the name of our ministry here it is loaves and fishes if any of you out there read your Bible and I pray that you do and if you don't you need to repent and get right with God and start reading it and find out that Jesus the Son of the Living God the one who died on Calvary's cross and rose from the dead and is coming back soon was always in food <laughs> he was cooking breakfast for the disciples and just as my shirt says loaves and fishes if you know the story you know about he turned the loaves and fishes and multiplied it here we are in South Carolina take a look in there you'll see that's not a fancy you don't have to buy a fancy tomato pie peel or a tomato pie stone you go to Lowe's or Home Depot and you buy an Italian ceramic tile for $1.88, three bucks, whatever it is. And there she goes. Looky here. Oh, it's a little on the edge there. I like living on the edge. I'll push it in a little bit. Right, let's make sure the door closes right. And push it back a little. There you go. Should be fine. Um so the story goes on that man can't live by bread alone but every word that proceed out of the mouth of God so when we had our businesses both in Columbus New Jersey and Yardville New Jersey we ministered to people in our business now some of you out there might be watching and say well that's not right to mix religion with business but number one let me clarify we don't have religion I hate religion. God hates religion. I have a relationship through what Jesus Christ did on the cross. So, I don't have religion, number one. Number two, if you study the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, you will see that when Jesus chose his disciples, he had different people in his ministry. He had fishermen, he had bankers, he had lawyers, he had tax collectors. And he rolled the streets preaching about the kingdom. He did not preach about a set of rules and regulations. Matter of fact, the only people that Jesus ever rebuked was the religious, the ones that wore the big fancy robes and prayed the same prayers over and over and over. And, 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 and they were called the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they were sad, you see. And... Jesus loved sinners. Now, here's where I qualify. I was a bad whammer jammer in my day. I was a bad egg, so to say. I was a drug dealer, drug smuggler, drug addict. I was a thief. I was a liar. I was all them things that you read about in the Bible that says, if you do this, you're on your way to hell. These people will not inherit the kingdom of God. But one day in 1991, God's mercy, I was in this church. It wasn't a church, though. It was a school building, and this girl took me there. I was shacking up with her. That means, shacking up means living with somebody you're not married to. That's called sin. S-I-N. It's not called an alternative lifestyle. It's called shacking up. And it's wrong. But God, in His mercy allow me to go to a science classroom one day up in East Brunswick, Crossroads School, 
and allowed me to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when that preacher man stood up there, he said, if you died tonight, do you know where you're going? Well, I about slid under my seat because I was shacking up with that girl and I knew what I was doing was wrong, but I didn't know how to get right with God. And thank God for that preacher man. I thank God for him every day because I'd still be on my way to hell. And he said, if you died tonight, do you know where you're going? Like I said, I know I was on my way to hell. And he said, if you want to get saved, I didn't know what getting saved was. But I knew there was something in me that was saying, you're on your way to hell, you better go up there and receive this Jesus. So I did. I went up there, I confessed Jesus, my Lord, my Savior, I repented. I stopped running with that crazy girl, she stopped running with this crazy guy. And I started living my life for Jesus Christ. And when that pastor laid hands on me, the power of God came on me. I laid on the floor and I cried like a baby because I was sorry for offending a holy God. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't care what people think anymore because I know there's something more real than what you could see that's in the natural realm because you see the spiritual is more real than the visible, the natural realm of what you can see. And being a person like me, that was a deadhead, meaning following the Grateful Dead, like taking LSD and all them kind of drugs and stuff, I was always had a knack for wanting a supernatural. But now that my life has changed, I've been filled with the Holy Spirit. I've danced with angels. God speaks to me regularly every day. And because he said, my sheep know me and hear my voice, another they will not follow. So God spoke to us when we was up there in New Jersey. 2010 and he said young man go south and the Lord began to open doors for us and I went to a couple meetings and people spoke things that God was speaking to me about and said I want you to go down there to South Carolina I want you to go down there to Spartanburg and when you go down there I'm going to meet you and I'm going to show you things that you do not know by the way that's in Jeremiah 33 3 say call upon me and I will answer thee and I will show thee great and mighty things that thou doest not know so I called on him. He answered me. So we came down to South Carolina. And he gave us a piece of land, 3.18 acres, according to the scriptures. Revelation 3.18, that says, I counsel thee to buy the gold that was tried in the fire. Hallelujah. We came down here. Looked at a piece of land. I said, it's mine. I'll take it. And the guys, I didn't know how much the guy wanted. I didn't know what, what, what the dimensions were. And he looked at me and thought I was nuts. But that was my answer to prayer. So here we are now, two years later. My son, who is the cameraman, has written his first book. He just turned 14 years old. He not only wrote it, but he published it. He's almost finished writing his second book. My wife is a nurse at a hospital over in Hendersonville, North Carolina, about a half hour away. But just a ride is worth the job. It's it's very therapeutic through the mountains. Um, we love it here. We know God is on the move down here. We know things are happening at a rapid pace. Um, if you're not a Bible scholar, and I'm not claiming to be one, but you don't even need to be a Bible scholar to know, things is tough out there, folks. This government is corrupt, wicked, and evil. And it's not getting any better. And if you're not right with God, you need to get right with God. And if you got sin in your life, you have to ask God to forgive you. Receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And turn your life to the one who died for you on Calvary's cross. And um, I think my first pie might be done. Oh, we're, we're dripping a little bit, Zeke. But pie looks great. Now, this dough I let sit overnight. I find that it works better. I like to have all my ingredients ready. And for all you pie lovers out there, if you ain't turned me off by now because I'm talking about Jesus, the love of my life, if you're still on target with me, out of all these pies, three pies, two big ones and that little ditty here, my little baby, that's one cup of whole wheat flour and two cups of all-purpose. And I do use... King Arthur. 
I find that to be the best. I use two cups of bread flour and one cup of whole wheat white flour. So we're getting ready to take this bad boy out of the oven. As I can hear it sizzling, I forgot to set my timer. Oh, she looks beautiful. I'm telling you right now, I can't believe I'm in awe, not of me, but of the tomato pie that comes out of this electric oven up here in the mountains of South Carolina. I didn't make a pie like this in my place in Jersey when I had the Via Della Rosa. Even my dad, the mighty man of God of Pizza, he, he, he would be amazed. My God, look at that. And you're going to hear the crunch of the crust when, it, when, you, when you go to cut it. That's the mark of a true pie, a good pie, is when you cut it and you hear that crunch. But as we get ready to close this video out, oh Jesus, we just want to, I just want to personally thank all the fathers of tomato pie and pizza in the great city of Trenton, the capital of New Jersey. I want to thank them for what they've done, for the pioneers that, that opened up restaurants and businesses, for the sacrifices that they made. Because life is built out of memories. What do you have in life? You have memories. So I remember the times, my first time at DiLorenzo's on Hamilton. I remember my first time at DiLorenzo's in, on Hudson Street. I remember Maruca's tomato pies down the shore that on Olden Avenue. These things are etched in my brain and my memory to tell my ch children and my grandchildren. And that's in the Bible too, to write a book of remembrance. So look at this little ditty we got here. My God. They're going to say that's a nice pie. Oh boy. You get a good shot of that, Zeke? Get it on the table here. Here's our table. We're going to take, and I want you to hear this crust. You ready? Yes, okay. You hear that? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Got all kind of goodies on there, and you can get a shot of that crust underneath. Look at that. Look at that pie. And it is all mozzarella. I didn't mix any cheeses. No, it's all mozz. You want to take some pictures of that, Zeke? My son is going to take some pictures of that, and then I'm going to do the next one. But from our house in Landrum to all my family and friends and all the pizza fathers in the Berg and in Hamilton now, the next generation of pizza men, tomato pie men, those that have moved out into the township and, and De Lorenzo's out in Robbinsville and Sloan Avenue and, and, and for anybody else, we just want to thank you for Papa's tomato pies, Maruca's tomato pies, all the famous bar pies that I had in Ivy Tavern and Nate's Pub. And uh, we just, I just wanted to simply say thanks. We appreciate you. Um, you've given us great memories. Uh, we love the city of Trenton, but it was time to move on. And uh, we bless you and your house. And shalom, shalom. Here we are again. For our second pie in the oven. A little cheese going all over the place, but that's the way we like it. Nice and cheesy. You know, even though we're working with an electric oven, you could tell some spots gets a little hotter, but I love that crust. You ready? Here it is. Oh, man. We got a little extra cheese on there. Here, crunch. There you go. Oh, man. They already ate that first one. A little burnt pieces. And we're off to the second one. It's very hot. Please be careful. Get a picture of that, Zeke. We're getting ready to take our, our third and final creation out of the oven. It's our little ditty pie, our little like bar pie. 
Um, person, I hate to say this, I used to throw the dough out because I make two 10 ounce pies and I would have a little piece of dough and one day I said, you know what, I let it rise and this is what we get out of it. So, I just want you all to see what you, we were going to throw out. You got a little beauty there. You got a nice crust. That's it. That's the end of our extravaganza, our little slice of Trenton from South Carolina. And a happy, once again, a happy Father's Day to all the fathers in Trenton, all the pizza and tomato pie fathers that gave us a lifetime full of memories from a little tomato pie. From our house to yours, like the lady says on TV, Tutila Tala Fata Mangiati. It's something like uh, in Italian, uh, from our house to yours. I don't know if I said it right, but in any event, Shalom, Shalom.